And this now is a normal transaction. So normal transactions are usually in the little plus button. Plus button, we're in the vendor cycle because eventually we're gonna purchase the inventory and we're gonna go down to the purchase order, the PO on down below. It looks kind of like uh, an expense form or, or kind of like an invoice type of form. And so you would think a financial transaction would happen, but no. We're gonna say this is Epiphone. I'm just gonna type it in here. This is the vendor that we buy our guitars from. So we're gonna buy them and then sell them. It's open right now by default. So obviously it's an open purchase order because uh, we're processing it. We haven't received it. You're gonna have to enter the email if you're gonna be emailing the purchase order, the purchase order being a form oftentimes that we will be providing to an outside person outside of our company, not just a data input form. Therefore, it's a customizable form, one you might wanna like put your logo on and all that kind of stuff. You got your mailing address, which uh, is here. We've got your ship to. So if you have your ship to options, if you were to ship it to someone other than us, then you can select the customer. So if you're gonna ship it directly to the customer, you could select the customer, which will then change the shipping, but we're gonna say it's gonna to come to us, it's gonna to come to our store. The purchase order date, let's say it's on the 12th, I'm gonna say January 12th, let's say minus. Notice I'm hitting plus and minus if I'm close to the date, and it'll then change the date. So I'm using the keyboard to do that. Anytime you use the keyboard, you're more of a geek, and that's good typically because it saves time when you're doing geeky things like entering data into the system. There's our, our shipping address, which is our default address. And so we're not gonna put ship via anything here, no tags. Notice that the category field is compressed automatically because I'm not gonna put it to the category of anything. I'm not gonna put it to inventory generically. I'm gonna use the items that we set up before or, or add new items as we, as we add them, giving us the actual units of guitars that we are requesting as well as the dollar amount for the cost of them. So I'm just gonna add a couple guitars here that we're gonna be requesting. So if I hit the drop down, we already set up all the guitars. That's when we set them up in our products and services. Now we might have sometimes that we add them on the fly or as we go, as they say, but we're, we're gonna add some that we already have. So we're gonna purchase an ELP because this is our main vendor. And we're imagining that we do them, do business with them often. We already have our deals set up between the two of us. And so there's the rate that we set up when we added this to our our products i'm going to say we're buying 20 of these and the rate is 400 the system knows that because i already set up the item if i hadn't set up the item i would then set up the item and put the rate the amount is going to be 8,000. notice i have a customer field and you might say why in the world would i have a customer field over here when i'm buying something from the vendor i'm the one that's buying here the customer is the one that i sell to the reason we have a customer field is because I might be in a situation, and we will do this later, where I purchase specifically for a particular customer. And if that's the case, the vendor doesn't need to know about that customer that I'm purchasing for, but I would like to track the customer so that when I receive the guitars, I know that the next step that I wanna do automatically is contact that customer and generate an invoice, which is the sales side of the transaction, because I now have their guitar. So if it was a custom guitar, customer came in, says I want a guitar, and we said, great, we don't have that on hand. I will order it for you custom. Then I might put the customer here so I can track that in, in as we go. All right, then I got an, the other one's gonna be an EPR. That's gonna be our Epiphone Riviera. So we're gonna say that we're gonna buy five of those at a rate of 440, dependent de that's determined by the system. So that comes out to 2,200, no customer. We're gonna say that we also are gonna buy an, e an EP EPSP that we set up. And so there's that one. Uh, hold on, what happened here? It's an, oh, it wants to set it up. I messed up something. It's gonna be an EP, SP, that one, that's the one. An Epiphone Standard Pro. I kind of made these up, so these are, are guitars, but you know, they're, <laughs> they, they're just part of the practice problem here. So I got five of those. We just put some guitars in place and that's 480. So 2,400, the, the rate. This is the cost, by the way, not what we're gonna sell them for. Obviously, we're gonna mark them up 
and sell them, which again is determined by the item already set up in the past. We will set up new items as we make more purchase orders and invoices and whatnot in the future. Okay, so that comes out to a total. Oh, I got one more. Let's do one more line here. This is going to be an EPSP. An EPSP. Wait, I already did that. So that's going to be an Epiphone. Let's make this one. I'm going to make this one an EPSH. EPSH. And then, so that I bought, and how many? I bought four of those at 320. Okay, let's do that. And then I bought the EPSP Epiphone Standard Pro, five of those at 480, and that comes out to 2,400. So the total here is 13,880. So note that we would think then we're gonna, okay, there's a total down here. This looks like a financial transaction is happening. I would think there'd be something happening to the balance sheet and the income statement. There is not because this is just uh, this is just a request. Nothing's actually happened yet, but I can use this purchase order to then populate a bill. Notice I can add lines, I can clear lines, I can put a, a message here if I want to on the purchase order. I can put an internal memo, I can add attachments if I want to down here, I can cancel, I can clear the whole thing. We can print it uh, and we can make it reoccurring. Let's look at the preview right now by going to the print that gives us a preview so this is what it would look like when we provide it to the uh the vendor there's there's my little test item with the memo and so there it is i'm going to close this back out and then we're going to and then you could have more options copy delete and uh audit audit the history then we have the options of save new if we want to make another one save and send it if we're going to email it I'm going to save and close it for the purpose of the practice problem. Okay, so no impact on the financial statements from that.